Hey guys, welcome back to A Wolf or Die. I'm pretty excited about today's video. We're going to be talking about all things crypto. What is it? Why is it valuable? And why it is so volatile? <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just dive right in. Um, a lot of people don't really understand the functions, the utilities of cryptocurrencies. And crypto is just a digital payment that you can exchange online for goods and services, just like regular currency. So we're not new to digital payments. We've seen online banking emerge. We've seen the creation of PayPal, the first digital peer-to-peer -peer money sending application uh we've seen venmo we've seen squares cash app we've seen we've seen a lot of very easy to use really popular digital wallets emerging we've seen a lot of digital payments emerging uh to, to give people options to give people more flexibility in how they're sending funds quickly efficiently and So, like I said, we've seen a lot of adoption regarding digital payments and they continue to grow in popularity. Um, so how does that relate to our crypto journey? Well, crypto, the first thing you have to understand about crypto is not all cryptocurrencies are created equal. So here we basically have the different categorizations of different cryptocurrencies and coins and tokens are very distinguishable. They need to be separated as a distinction. So coins are essentially assets that are operating on their own native blockchain where tokens are assets that are foreign to the blockchain that they live on. So in simple terms, Ethereum is a native coin because ethereum's coin runs on the ethereum blockchain bitcoin is a native coin because it operates on the bitcoin blockchain cardano same deal now um tokens are altcoins that operate on another native blockchain so they don't have their own native blockchain but they're operating on the ethereum blockchain most other altcoins operate on ethereum's blockchain so that's really the key distinction between coins versus tokens tokens don't have their own blockchain that they operate on that's pretty much the gist of it and what is blockchain <laughs> um you'll hear me talking about blockchain a lot on this channel when i'm just referring to crypto um, blockchain is a digital ledger of transactions that is duplicated, distributed across an entire network of computer systems, and it's a type of transactions in which all of the transactions are recorded on a cryptographic network using hashes. So what does that mean? The blockchain is simply it's a digital ledger all of the transactions are public unless you're on a private blockchain and you cannot alter the transactions on the blockchain you can't change them because every single person in the network every person on the chain has a copy of this ledger so it really hedges against any kind of fraud or manipulation of the information because all of the information that's on the blockchain everyone it could be thousands, it could be millions of people has a copy. And if you try to alter a certain block, it will not match all of the other million copies of blocks that people have a copy of. So that's what blockchain is. Most cryptocurrencies operate on a blockchain network. Um, not all of them. XRP's Ripple coin does not operate on a blockchain system. And um, but for the most part, most of them do. So that's kind of a intro to how crypto runs, uh, how it runs the software slash interface slash operating systems, uh, whatever you would like to refer to it as the blockchain. Um, that's pretty much how it runs. And back to the different types. So we have a few different classifications of cryptos that you need to understand before you can really understand why 
each one of them is valuable in its own way and each function and utility that they have. So I'm going to keep this display here for the time being and um, go dive right in. So security tokens are essentially a just a tradable financial asset, hence the word security is a security is something that is is tradable. And what you really want to note is basically they're digital liquid contracts that you'll have for fractions of an asset, whether it's real estate, it could be cars, it could be corporate stock, or uh, basically any any kind of investment in an asset is going to be a security token or an asset token, uh, which leads me to the next classification, um, equity tokens. So equity tokens are essentially a form of security tokens that allow the holders to have some sort of ownership rights. And this, again, they're all, they're all similar to a degree. So equity tokens are essentially you holding shares in a blockchain, I'm sorry, a blockchain crypto mining corporation. So any token that is backed by an asset, whether it's a stock, you know, a, a fraction of a company or whether it's real estate or some tangible asset that is backed by this token. Those are going to be your equity and security tokens and your digital currency. Of course, those are the coins that are primarily used as digital payments. So again, XRP, Litecoin, you have Bitcoin Cash, you have XLM, you have Luna, Stellar, and utility tokens are the um, really different cryptos because they are linked to a very specific function. They're linked to a particular service or a particular good that you're exchanging the 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 file coin for. I'm sorry, but the utility token. So file coin is an example of a utility token. So when you exchange file coin between parties, there is you're exchanging the right to create a file or open a file or you know take possession of a file. And SC coins, the CDC civic coins can be used for verifying the user's identity. So in real world terms, like the world that you and I are used to operating in on a daily day to day basis, you can compare utility tokens to like a gift card or a airline ticket or like a bus pass there. There's a very specific trade off or exchange for what this this token is being used for so you're you're exchanging a very specific token for a very specific service or good in in return so that's pretty much what utility tokens um are classified as they they have their own special utilities uh, we have the smart contract cryptos which are going to be one of the most valuable in my opinion. So what are smart contract cryptos? What are what are their functions? What are their utilities? Uh, smart contracts are simply programmable contracts that have certain protocols in place. So when certain conditions and terms are met, the contract is either executed or or nullified. So it's it's essentially a contract without all of the confounding factors that can make contracts illegitimate. So for instance, if I decide to draft a contract, I'm the only one that has the the key to change the, the encrypted contract. I can go change the terms to whatever I want after it's signed. I can do I can change terms, I can add terms, I can manipulate whatever I want to do. 
But smart contracts, on the other hand, you cannot do that. You cannot alter the terms. You cannot change the agreement. You can't manipulate any of the data. Once the certain terms are created, once the, you know, outline is drafted for whatever your smart contract entails, it can't be altered after. And if there are new terms or things that you need to add to a contract, you would create a new smart contract. So smart contracts are going to be the way of the future. Of course, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot are some of the largest smart contract cryptos. Um, end of the summer, when Cardano completes their Gogan phase, actually, they will be fully functioning with, regarding smart contracts. So end of the summer, I'm expecting that to be a huge catalyst event for Cardano, one of my personal favorites uh, crypto projects. And um, next we have store of value coins. So the largest store of value coins are going to be Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin is the largest store of value coin. And why is that? It's because Bitcoin has a very similar economic profile to that of gold, of physical gold. And why is that? You might ask, why does cryptocurrency have value? Why does Bitcoin have value? Well, then you need to ask yourself why the money in your pocket, why the money in your account has value. Our value, our fiat currency system has value because we accept and we put our trust into the government to uphold the institutions that recognize our currency as legitimate. So currencies used to be backed by the gold standard. And ever since we refrain from having our currency backed by gold and our money supply rapidly exceeded the supply of gold to back it, ever since that happened, the value of money has steadily been decreasing and that established trust that gives fiat currency value because that's all it is it's an established trust between citizens and the government and corporations it's all it's an accepted network it's an accepted um network of trust so essentially taking all of that into consideration we now transfer back into why bitcoin is valuable Bitcoin is valuable because of the same reason that gold is valuable. This is basic economics 101, where there is an increasing demand for a resource or a product or a service, and the supply is either diminishing, as in the case of gold, or at a fixed limited supply, which is the case of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has 21 million coins in circulation. That is the only number that will ever exist, there will not be any other Bitcoins that are made or, or created or programmed. That cannot be said about the United States dollar, the USD. We are printing money at an alarming rate and basic economics 101 guys, the number one cause of inflation is the amount of money is increasing in circulation while the trust and the faith in its value has been diminishing for the past like two decades. So Bitcoin, however, we've seen Bitcoin over the past decade steadily, steadily, steadily increasing before this boom that we've had um, during this bull run. But we've seen the value of bitcoin increasing exponentially and the value of fiat currencies are slowly slowly decreasing every year why is your salary staying the same but all of your consumer items around you are going up in price why is your money worth less why do you have less purchasing power although you're making the same amount of money, inflation. Now, back to the store of value. Bitcoin's economic profile is synonymous with gold because of its scarcity, 
because institutions are now realizing that it's a great hedge to inflation and converting many of their cash reserves into Bitcoin instead of, US, instead of the US dollar. So that being said, the dollar, <laughs> all fiat currencies are losing money. You losing value, I'm sorry. And the reason that that's happening is because that established trust that we talked about, that accepted value is diminishing as the years go on. It's diminishing, it's decreasing, while the emergence of cryptocurrencies and the enticing investment opportunities and potential returns are drawing institutions they're drawing them in. They're drawing in people that are losing faith in the U.S. financial system and in the financial systems in general. So that is my perspective, my take on why Bitcoin is so valuable is because there is being a sh there's a shift in in sentiment that's surrounding Bitcoin. Everyone knows just a few years ago, there was a war against cryptocurrency saying that, you know, it's mostly used for criminal, criminal activity, which only a very small portion of cryptocurrency is, is even used for illegal activities because like people that say um, Bitcoin is mostly used for illegal activity, Bitcoin is all, all of the transactions for Bitcoin are on a public ledger. So if you're trying to mask your identity, you're going to want to enter into a privacy coin. Like you're not going to even want to have all of your transactions on a public ledger for people to see. So there's just a lot of misinformation that goes along with, with talking about crypto. And I'm hoping that I can help alleviate or dismiss some of the misconceptions that a lot of people have about the utilization of crypto and the functions. But that being said, education, it paves the way for adoption and acceptance. So that's pretty much my take on why Bitcoin is going to be exponentially more valuable than a lot of the other coins because of that very specific niche utility that it brings. It mimics gold, but in a much more liquid way. So th those are the store of value classifications. We have exchange tokens, which are simply the coins that are native to a certain exchange. And what I personally like about exchange tokens, when you purchase them with whatever exchange you use, I personally use crypto.com here. I think that's like a lion emoji or something for its, its logo. But um, that's my personal choice of crypto exchanges. And their coin CRO, when you stake it annually, you can see returns of up to 12%. That is an outrageously high number considering when you deposit money into a savings account, you might see 0.001% interest annually if you're lucky. So I like the exchange tokens um, because they incentivize investing in their native tokens for obscene returns annually. So that's pretty exciting. Love to see that. And we have um, stable coins. So stable coins are going to be where you're going to see much less volatility because they're pegged to a direct physical currency. So their value is directly linked with a, a, a fiat currency. I'm sorry, like USDC is US dollar coin. So every single USDC that is in circulation, there is a US dollar that is backing that coin. So you're not gonna see a lot of volatility with stable coins. And that is pretty much their function is to, you're still operating in the, ecos, in the crypto ecosystem and you are operating outside of the US financial system but you're not going to see a lot of the volatility that you're going to see with a lot of the other cryptos. There are some subcategories that you're going to find in stable coins. You're going to find fiat collateralized coins. You're going to find crypto 
collateralized loins. And you're going to find non collateralized coins. So, fiat collateralized cryptos, stable coins, are simply backed by fiat currency. And collateral is just a hedge. So, when you think of collateral, think of something that if you using a security backed assets to secure a loan. So essentially, collateralized just means that there is a fiat currency backing the, the, the crypto coin. So yeah, guys, this pretty much sums up all of the different classifications of cryptos that you're going to want to know. Um, there's store value, there's utility coins, there's exchange tokens, equity, tokens which are asset backed and there's digital currency which are going to be your payment cryptos and there are privacy coins and now there are some tokens too non-fungible tokens are you know probably the most popular tokenized assets that that you'll come across but there is a lot of other opportunities and there are a lot of other utilizations for crypto tokenizations and I'm going to post a link down below for you guys to check out some of my own NFTs that I've made from some of my artwork you can probably see some of it in the background that's just a little preview but I do create NFTs as well and yeah I'm gonna leave a link down below for you guys to check that out and back to the discussion at hand so like we talked about, knowing the different functions of the different classifications of crypto is going to help you tremendously in understanding what makes one coin valuable and one makes another coin a mean coin. <laughs> another um, comparison that can be made as to the legitimacy of exchanging crypto using crypto and keeping it stored in your own personal wallet every bitcoin can be broken down into a hundred million satoshi as in pennies to a dollar so you're going to want to understand the functionality and the utility of how crypto is coined how it's token and how you can keep your privacy secure and your fund secure. So you're going to want to keep all of your crypto in a digital wallet. Coinbase has one, Binance has one, crypto.com has one. You can also obtain a physical wallet like Trezor, um, a hard wallet for hard storage. But every digital wallet has a unique wallet address. So your unique wallet address is going to be synonymous to that of your account number and routing number so you're never going to want to send funds to the wrong address you always need to make sure that you have the correct wallet address it's this it's your secure unique identifying number and the trade-off that comes along with this having your own access and not having an intermediary like a bank holding onto your funds. If you forget your personalized recovery phrase that every exchange slash wallet will make you create a recovery phase, it is usually um, between 13 and 16 words, I believe, if I remember correctly. And that recovery phrase is the link to if you ever happen to forget the password if you ever forget the password you'll want to have your recovery key or else you will not be able to get into your wallet and it will be lost forever so this is the trade-off between not having an intermediary like a bank a centralized institution decentralized means you do accept more accountability for your funds for the transference of money so you know, when you go to a bank, if you send money to the wrong person, you send a wire to the wrong person, you typed in some numbers wrong, you know, the bank will recover your money for you. 
as a centralized institution, your money is insured to a certain degree. So that is the trade-off that you accept with decentralized financial institutions. You don't have that. There's no recovery. There's no, if you send it to the wrong place, like it's gone. Don't send it to the wrong place. Don't type in your wallet address incorrectly. Type it in right. Keep your recovery key saved. So anyways, that's how um, it, it's synonymous with the structure that gives most people comfort when using a bank. You have your own personalized digital wallet, and it is recommended not to keep them on the exchanges. Um, and when people ask if crypto is safe, it all depends on the context. So this is going to come back to keeping your funds stored in a wallet. You don't want to keep them on exchanges because they're more vulnerable on exchanges. And this is something that banks see also. Banks see hacks and data breaches all the time. However, again, this is another trade-off with keeping money on exchanges, which I don't recommend. There's not a insurance protection in, in place. There is no backing up of your funds. So you have to be really careful when you are looking to buy crypto and when you're looking to store it so you can hold on to it. There's no physical card that goes along with your wallets in the same way that you have a card that's linked to your bank account. So every single coin like the US dollar has an identifying number, a unique token ID. Every US dollar that's printed in circulation has a unique serial number that is relayed from the Federal Reserve down to the smaller banks the money's distributed to. So every coin slash token is accounted for in that respect. Another thing that you guys need to take into account is there are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there that are scams, that are literal, don't even, if you cannot find the white pages, the white papers are essentially all the research about the founders, the vision, and the utility of the project that is behind the crypto. So if you can't find the white papers, you can't find any information about the founding team you all you're going by is like a social media advertisement it's probably illegitimate and i would not advise like buying crypto just because you see an advertisement for it like i could literally go mint a coin and make an advertisement for it and people could buy it but there would be no function there is no utility it's a completely useless coin so don't fall for that trap because there are a lot of people that are scamming people with crypto and creating coins that have no function, no utility, and literally getting rich overnight because people fall for their scams and they think that they're going to see these crazy returns and then it's not the case. So just be mindful of that. If you can't find any research about the founding team, about the project itself, they're called white papers. If the project doesn't have any research or white papers, I would stay away from it. There are risks with crypto that do stem from investing. So crypto is highly, highly volatile assets because there's still so much fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Even though we are seeing a lot of adoption, we're seeing a lot of institutions buying in, we're seeing countries adopt bitcoin as a legitimized currency we're seeing a lot of acceptance we're seeing a lot of progress but we're also seeing our progress being met with a lot of resistance and a lot of fear and a lot of obstacles so the volatility that you're going to see in the crypto markets is substantial i'm talking about like you might see 15 to 40% decreases every day. So I don't recommend actively trading 
cryptocurrencies unless you decide to make that your full-time job like i mean if you can sit down and watch the movements watch the whales wallets monitor um different wallet addresses seeing where massive funds are being sent where they're being exchanged if you can monitor that very actively and decide you you want to trade i don't trade crypto in in the way that i trade stocks and i swing trade stocks so it is highly volatile because <laughs> every time there's an article about china you know furthering its war on crypto furthering the assault on crypto you're going to see the market tank you're going to see it plummet into oblivion every single time it never fails and that's because there's still a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt the psychology of the crypto space plays so much around human sentiment with interpreting information and not seeing the long-term big picture so the crypto space is highly volatile especially in a short-term perspective so to give you an example you might look at any of the coins and you might look at a not during a bull run but during uh, a down cycle and you might see the past day down 10 percent the month down 15 percent the past three months down 25 percent the past six months maybe down you know 40 50 percent but when you hit that year view when you hit that year average you're gonna be up you're gonna see that oh well it looks like i'm down for the month the week the day but i'm actually up 30 percent 40 percent 100 percent some of these cryptos have seen bitcoin has seen over a thirty thousand percent increase in the past few years so crypto is very volatile because it's not designed to be short term it's not it's it's not in the stages of short term gains just yet because of the volatility more people are going to lose money than make money on these insane run-ups because they get terrible entry points and they go buy in after the coin has run up three thousand percent and then they're confused when their account plummets back into oblivion because well you just entered the market after it increased three thousand percent there is going to be a pullback there's going to be a massive sell-off so i don't encourage actively trading crypto i am a strong believer in hodling you know hold 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 diamond hands until you know we see the next bull cycle then more slowly gradually we're going to see the acceptance we're going to see more countries making bitcoin a legal tender we're going to see more institutions implementing blockchain we're going to see more companies utilizing cryptocurrencies to their advantage so there are risks and the volatility stems from like we talked about just that human sentiment every time china decides to talk about how they're taking measures against bitcoin it tanks the market every time there are articles about the irs increasing capital gains taxes we see the market tank. <laughs> we there is a lot of like we talked about fear uncertainty and doubt that influences the markets heavily especially in the crypto sphere because we're in such a limbo of change right now that there there's so many tugging forces that are you know trying to ban it trying to keep their grip on society by not allowing this level of decentralization and freedom like china and there are people like michael, michael saylor and elon musk who are buying bitcoin by the billions so we we're gonna see this volatility for i mean the foreseeable future like the next few years 
minimum, the crypto markets are going to be highly volatile. And, and that just, that is a trade-off that comes along with the acceptance and mass adoption and implementation that we're going to see for all of the infrastructure fixes that crypto and decentralized finance in general is going to bring. And naturally, the next question that you guys probably have is what cryptos should I buy? Which cryptocurrencies, you know, are going to be the winners in the next few years? Which ones are going to outlive some of the stupid mean coins that we're seeing? Anyways, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is purely for educational purposes only. And... Well, what you need to be asking yourself about is time and risk tolerance. So if you are in it for the long haul, you know, you need to be asking yourself, what's the timeline that you're looking to make returns? What is the amount of time that you can go without, without touching these funds, without having to sell at a loss, things like that. And when it comes to your risk management, don't trade crypto on leveraged funds. What do I mean by that? Trading on leveraged funds with crypto is synonymous with trading on margin in the stock market. I don't personally ever trade on margin. Um, it's just, <laughs> I know a lot of people do it. That's how the hedge funds stay rich. But what happens when you're trading on borrowing funds and those borrowed funds take a 30% dip on the day and you get margin fault. You now have to return that borrowed amount of money along with whatever the interest is. So if you're not having money to cover your margin call, you can just be in a world of hurt and a world of pain. So don't trade leveraged funds in the crypto space because the market is too volatile. You will you may get lucky. You might get lucky sometimes, but you will probably 99% of the time lose a lot of money. Like don't trade on borrowed funds. Just, it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Unless again, this all comes down to like, if you have made it your, your essence, you've made it your life goal to be a trader, to be a crypto trader, and you have time to sit down in front of the computer every single day, watch the triggers, trigger signals, and unless you've done that, unless you've made that commitment, I don't recommend trading on leveraged funds. It's just not a good idea. Um, so guys, that pretty much sums up the scope that I wanted to go into in this video. Um, I am going to have a video for you guys about my actual top crypto projects that I believe in for the next five years that I think are going to see four, five, six X returns. Um, I'll have that coming up for you guys soon and if you liked the video you can hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel like i said guys i'm just here to bring everybody onto the money trail although this is not financial advice and you should always do your own research and your own due diligence but i'm here to help you guys learn things as i'm learning them and like i said i am very new to the space and the video quality will increase the content will increase in quality and thank you guys for tuning in and i'm going to leave a referral link down to my crypto.com um referral code so once you guys sign up for that we can both receive some free crypto that's good for you that's good for me and i will also be providing some links to some of the resources that I use for research and some of the um, programs and software that I use to track crypto movements. So yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in to Evolve or Die and um, stay safe out there, guys.
Hey guys, welcome back to A Wolver Die. I'm pretty excited about today's video. We're going to be talking